guys, I totally forgot to tell you that my artwork by Candlelight is going to be in a show coming up. Of course, for you guys, it will have already happened. It will already have been over. I just dropped that artwork off last Friday. No, sorry. Last Saturday morning. And I'm just so excited. I'm so nervous because the show is this Friday um, in the evening. And as I tend to do, I get nervous because it's a social situation. I think there's going to be a lot of people there because there were a lot of people in the, the one from, I think it was May. But we'll see. Um, really excited, really nervous. But hopefully I can channel some of that energy from yesterday <laughs> and not be scared the day of. That would be great. So, yeah. Excited about that. Um, I just heard screaming outside earlier and I don't really know what that's about. I tried to figure out what it was and then a little wasp or bee got in, a really tiny one, like this small. And I accidentally hurt it when I was trying to like help it go outside and I felt bad, but it seems like it's fine. And I put it outside, but it took me a while to get it in the thing to get it outside. But yeah, and the garden's really nice right now. Do you guys want to see? getting my art packaged up for a art show coming up in October. Um, so I'm just putting bubble wrap on it. I've got my contact info written on the artwork as they needed it and the price and everything. Um, so I'm going to use some tape and I'm going to tape it up and have it protected. Here we go. All wrapped up. I've got bubble wrap and I've got clear plastic over the bubble wrap as just an extra protection. Um, I just hope it doesn't. <laughs> I just hope it isn't annoying for them to unpackage. I just like to have it like, actually, I didn't see this rip. I'm going to have to take that. But um, hopefully, you know, it doesn't annoy them. I don't know how other artists are bringing their art in. I don't know if they wrap theirs up or if they just have them open, but I feel weird about not having at least something. And I know this plastic's kind of needs some patching up, but I've got the bubble wrap underneath it. About to get ready for my show tonight. So a cool thing that I want to do is I want to have like an artwork in a four by six frame, which I kind of have already taken apart, but this is the backing for it. And I put like a little four by six white um, photo paper piece behind it because it'll be kind of, it'll kind of look like a mat in a way from a distance. But anyways, this will go behind these because they're not exactly four by six. They're a little bit smaller. And then there's a piece of glass that goes over it. I should probably use some Windex on it and clean it. But other than that, this is what that is. And then these things attach the glass to the backing. And basically, my thought process is this will be a cool little way that I can have um, a piece of art in my living space that gets changed out every once in a while. So we have um, this redhead with the blue flowers, which I don't know what time of year, I guess spring or summer would be a good time of year for that one. This one, it's like a fairy with, a, she's got a snake um, and she kind of has like these flowers on her head and some candles. I think she could like work for uh, spooky season. I think she could work for spring. I think she could work for summer. Pretty much anything but winter. 
I, I would say. Um, and then this one back here, she would be great for spring and summer. This one would be great for spooky season or just fall in general. Um, winter might work too, but she doesn't look like she's really dressed for winter, so not really sure if winter would work. Um, but her, her dress is kind of like gives winter vibes just because of the colors, so it might work. And then this one could pretty much go with any season. Um, it's not really season specific, but it does have vines, so you know, I guess it just really depends. I guess it could be an evergreen vine, so it could really work for any season, but the background looks pretty green for winter time, so I don't know if winter would work, but um, this one could work for pretty much any season, except, I mean, I think even winter, because these, these uh, white specks can be interpreted as snow falling or sparkles or fairies or so many things. So that should work for winter. She also kind of looks like she's wearing something that would be pretty winter appropriate, at least in my area. We don't get super harsh winters usually. Um, certain days might be colder than others, but in certain, certain years might get harsher than others. But for the most part, this could be a pretty decent winter outfit. Um, especially cause it just, it looks really thick. <laughs> it looks really thick and warm to me, especially with the turtleneck aspect to it. But she does have a flower though. So I, I don't know, but, um, this one definitely fall, definitely spooky season. And then this one definitely spring and summer vibes. So it looks like the main thing I'm kind of missing is winter time, but again, I think I can make that one work for winter. And what I'm kind of getting at is like, this is a way that I can use my Patreon prints that I have extra of, because I have extra of almost, not all, but almost all of my Patreon prints that I've done for my $10 patrons. And since they're exclusives, I'm not able to sell them because that's why they're special is because they're exclusives. So this is a way I can use them for my own house because they're exclusive except for with me. I'm the exception, I guess. So I can hang them in my house because it's my art, but I can't sell them. So this is my idea of using these to create kind of a seasonality because I don't have a lot of seasonal decor. And I thought this could be a way I can just switch them out pretty easily. It's not very hard to take this thing apart and just switch out the images. And I also have a, a huge stack of more of these. Um, the ones here are just some of my top favorites. I have more favorites, but these are the top, top, top favorites that I have. Um, so... I think it could be really fun. And if you guys don't know, I'm going to do a little uh, selfish little plug here. Um, this, These are each from my Patreon prints, okay? Each of these are a Patreon print that I've done for my $10 patrons. And if you go to patreon.com slash Macy Lou, you can sign up to become a $10 a month patron. And what you get is you get one print that is exclusive to that month to my $10 patrons. You get one print per month that you're signed up and it's only $10 and that covers the, um, the shipping and everything unless you're out of the country. If you're out of the country, please add I think I have on there to add $5. I can't, I can't remember, but it's it should be on the Patreon site. Um, but I just need a little extra to send it out of the country just in case. Um, and yeah, it's I noticed it is usually pretty expensive to ship to Canada, for example. So that's why I did that. Um, but anyway, basically you get a print and you also get a little note from me and sometimes it's a handwritten note on a piece of paper sometimes it's actually inside of a card so sometimes i send 
a card that I did not design. Like I'll go and buy like note cards and I'll write your little note in there or I'll just write it on a piece of paper. It depends on what I got going on and what I have on hand. Right now I have some um, Asian inspired artwork cards that I write the notes in the, at the current moment, but that is very limited supply. That's going to go away pretty soon. Um, and every month I change, you know, every month is a different art print that I create, uh, in addition to the little handwritten note. And if you're a new patron, you also receive at least one of my business cards, if not multiple of my business cards. And my business cards are actually kind of a little work of art in and of themselves, like a little mini artwork, because the whole entire back of the business card is a crop of one of my favorite paintings that I've done, uh, oil paintings that I've done, that is. And if you notice, all of these artworks are actually printed digital art. So these artworks were created in Procreate or some other digital uh, creation platform, app, whatever. I don't know why I can't think of the right words. But I do want to give a heads up. Um, this past or not this past this month in October I don't know when this video is coming out but I'm recording this in October right now uh, this month of October is not digital prints it's actually traditional prints because I got burnt out on doing this digital art for years I did this for years for patreon and for whatever reason I am less skilled at digital it's not that I don't think that my art is good digitally. I actually really love these, but they take me so much time to create. Even the hours that are logged in my app don't really explain how much time it takes me to make these because I have to come up with a concept and sketch it, which is, you know, typical of any art. But on top of that, it logs the hours that it takes me to make these and it it goes over the span of days and I think part of it is I just my hand hurts and gets tired because I find that I get hand pain a lot more often when I do digital art on my iPad than when I do traditional painting and traditional drawing. So I took a break from these digital type artworks and I currently am doing traditional for my Patreon. Um, I'm faster at it. I feel like I'm more skilled at it, uh, depending on the, the 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 medium and the type of subject I'm trying to, to create. But also, it just takes me less time. And so, it's kind of a way for me to just <laughs> take a break from digital and relax a little bit. Because this season is always really stressful for me, which I can probably talk about in a different video in the future if you guys want to hear more about that but I love fall it's my favorite season but I get extremely stressed and anxious around the season for whatever reason um so anyways I just wanted to share this with you because I thought this was a really cool use of this kind of thing if you are a patron of any artist and you do receive a small free print every single month think about doing something like this so that you can um, enjoy each and every artwork, actually see it in your living space, and it's not just tucked away and stored, which there's nothing wrong with just storing them for, for looking at whenever. But I'm just saying, I'm just putting this out, because it is, is it an option. It is an option. I can't talk today. Too much coffee. Um, it's an option for you, and this is what I am going to do. And here it is. In the frame, ready to go in the living room for display.
So today I am working on my November Patreon art. And I've been working on my November Patreon art for a while. I keep sketching ideas and I keep just not liking them, but I finally sketched something that I kind of like. And I think once I actually paint over the sketch, I think I'm going to actually love it, hopefully, but we'll see. So what I've done is I've sketched this right here and it's kind of chaotic so what i'm going to do is i'm going to place it over my watercolor paper and then i am going to tape this down in place with some painter's tape and i'm going to transfer the art to the watercolor paper and then i'm going to um paint that and i'm going to maybe even most likely even illustrate over top of it with pencil and maybe then I will like how it looks um, but we'll see how it turns out and if I don't like it the good news is is I have a lot of watercolor paper right now and I can just sketch more ideas and also cool thing about it is I can also once I get it on the watercolor paper and painted and finished and polished I can actually crop it because I feel like it's a little chaotic. So I might need to crop it once it's actually done for the Patreon print because they're kind of small and there might be too many details for this to be the full image. So the cool thing is, is I can scan it in once it's done and dry and I can put it in Photoshop. I can crop what I like and then go with that. So here's another view of it in better quality. So you can actually see some of these details. Yeah, it's still kind of a rough sketch, but I think that while I'm painting it, some of the background will kind of um, come together. So I just need to decide how exactly I want to place this. I think this is cold press watercolor paper, by the way, in case you're curious. Also, I tape, put the tape on my pants because I want to take some of that adhesive off I don't want it to be so much that it rips my paper but it still could rip it but again I plan on cropping it anyway so it should be okay I should probably get more tape <laughs> that is a sliver but we'll see how this goes so then the next step is to take this pencil and to heavily mark the back so that it transfers to the paper but it is watercolor paper so it has a texture so it's not going to be perfect I guess I should have sketched directly on the watercolor paper because this did not go great, but we're going to be able to clean it up by adding some lines and then I can just paint and see what happens. Here is the finished November Patreon artwork. Basically, I'll just scan this in and I will print out small prints of it for my $10 patrons. And I really like how it turned out. I got nightmares in my head, I fear. The thoughts build up until I can't hear That my mind fills up into a creature
to allow me to keep a lot of things in this little Kipling bag. All right, here we go. I'm gonna open this up right before your eyes. The first thing I'm gonna show you that I have in here is yes, I have towels in here. My little pack towels. Many of you have seen this in my previous videos, but I do pack some towels with me because if I'm in an airport or someplace where I'm gonna have a long layover and I wanna get cleaned up, um, I'm going to want to be able to use something that's other than the paper towels in the bathrooms. The first one is this little pack towel here. Now, I take my pack towels and I cut them down and then I just kind of burn the edges a little bit so it gets them to keep them from fraying. So this is a quarter of a piece. I use this for my face. And then I also have another one of a different color that I use for my body. And the reason why is I don't like using the same cloth for my face and my body. So I have two of those little quarter pieces and then one larger piece, which is my half piece of pack towel right here. And I use that just to dry off and everything. So that way I have something to, you know, clean up if I need to, whether I'm at uh, an airport or something, I have something other than paper towels to clean up with. The next thing I have is soap, and this is just a little clean bar of soap that I use for my face or my body, and it's in one of these little zip pouches. That way it keeps it from getting um, all messy. Even though it's wet, you can see in here it's been wet. It keeps it all nice and clean in my little bag. The next thing I carry is my contact lens case with my face cream. The dark blue here is for my night cream. The white is for my day cream. This allows me to keep about a week's worth of cream for my face in the
that I will have to apply a little touch up of varnish too. As you can see, the varnish didn't um, cover this little sliver here on the edge. It's kind of hard to capture on camera, but you can see where it's not shiny. So I just got to touch that up and I have this little tiny brush for that. So I will dip it into this gam bar. Let's see. Sometimes I just dip it in if it's just something like this. Let's see if I can... Oh, where was it? Okay. Okay. I don't know how I can have the camera. Might not be able to have it here. And then I'll spread it with the foam thingy. Just to feather it out. Wouldn't want a big blob of too much varnish. I know you can't see what I'm doing, but <laughs> try to ignore my hair and everything. But I'm supposed to get my new laptop today, which is great because editing videos on my iMac has become very tedious and now that I have this this is ridiculous so feel free to laugh but now that I have three channels um it's gonna be great to be able to edit video faster uh let's see I gotta log in to my iMac um so I'm gonna be finishing up the haunted box the haunted box is done I just have to like photograph it for marketing. I have a really cool photo idea for it. Uh, we'll see how it goes, but I need to package everything up. It's sitting here curing right now. The varnish is curing, but it's been curing, so it should be cured. Um, I'm going to double check it and make sure I don't need to varnish another layer. I may or may not need to varnish more layers on it. Shouldn't have to varnish more than a second layer because if I varnish too many layers, it it's not good. So um, I try to keep it as minimum as possible. And I used that fixative on this and it did great. I did a test to see if it would um, transfer to uh, another piece of paper. Like I put like a piece of like computer paper on it and I like pushed on it, tried to like get it to transfer, you know, um, pencil or paint bits and it wouldn't so I think the fixative did great. I did the fixative inside which you either already saw the footage or you're gonna see the footage soon. I did it inside because it was so windy and it was too cold that day. Um, the back of the fixative says it has to be at least 50 degrees I think. <laughs> Excuse me I have the burps from my coffee but so I had to do it inside, but I did open the door there and I had the curtain set up. Well, you'll see it in the footage. But then later I was like, wait, why didn't I just open my windows? So later I shut the door so birds and stuff wouldn't come in. And then I opened the windows. But this one over here was so freaking hard to open. It was stuck shut. I had to get a hammer and the little what is that rubber rubber mallet yeah i had to get a rubber mallet uh a hammer luckily the hammer was already here and i had to like force it open because it was stuck big time it was so freaking hard to open i should have filmed it because it was it was insanely hard to open but um oh i don't have oh, okay that kind of stays <laughs> But last night I was sketching, and so I can show you guys what I was working on. Um, yeah, my laptop is coming today, and I'm very excited because it's going to make... It should, in theory, make my video editing so much faster, less tedious. Because it got so bad, it got to the point where I didn't really know how the video was going to look until I exported it. Because it was so laggy that I just, I couldn't really tell. Like, especially if I ever had to slow down video or speed up video duration. Anyway, this is the sketch I was working on last night. This is gonna be a spider. There's gonna be a spider web. 
But yeah, that's what I was working on last night, and I was having a good time listening to an audiobook while I was working on it. So I was actually working later than I normally do, because um, there was a point a few years ago, it might have been like two years ago, I don't know, where I stopped working later at night, and I just tried to fit everything into a normal, like, not really nine to five, but like, try to stop around six or something like that. Um, but keep in mind, that's not to say, oh, I worked all these long hours because like, I'm not a morning person, so my morning starts later than most of you. <laughs> but um, I was trying to keep everything kind of like done by five, done by six, maybe seven. Um, but then last night I was like, I want to work late. So I worked on this and I don't know. I, I think it's interesting. There's a little fairy, there's a, a lime slice and there's like this creepy face on the other side of her, her head. So anyway, that's what I was working on last night. And then yesterday I was working on some, uh, Christmas gift paintings and I've been working on the haunted box. It should be, like I said, it, it should be done. I just, I have to do the marketing part now. I have to take the pictures. I have to package it. I have to decide how it's going to be packaged because I need to get it ready in case it sells really quick. And I just need to make sure I have a box and bubble wrap and everything for pack, for packing and shipping. And yeah, that's what I'm up to. And then tomorrow is the seed swap in Bristol. So we will be making the commute out to Bristol and it'll be fun. I'm a uh, part of a a plant group, a natural, natural, a native plant group, and most of their meetings and stuff happen kind of in the northeast part of the state, so it's kind of a commute, but their, a lot of their meetings are also on Zoom, so most of the time I'm just here on Zoom on the meetings, so that's great, but this is a seed swap, so it's in person, and I'm excited to meet some people that I have been having the pleasure of learning from on Facebook. Um, and I, I hope I hope that they're gonna be there because I've been wanting to meet these people for quite some time. But anyway, that's all for now.
please support the channel, like the video, comment, and subscribe. You can also support my work by buying art from me at mesulu.com. Thanks for watching!